this example, I'm going to show you how to how to create standardized reports using a software called Cordo. So in my in my data science for crime analysis book, I show you how to use a tool called Jupyter Notebooks to do this. But I'm showing here Cordo. I've migrated most of my work to Cordo now, and so all the things that I've shown using Jupyter Notebooks still apply to Cordo as well. I just find it a little bit easier. And I'm also going to show a, a different tool to, to edit those reports as well. So Cordo documents similar to python.py files are just plain text, but they have a file extension QMD. So you can see in our KC training, I have a report.qmd in this particular file. And if you go ahead and open it up in Notepad++, you can see the, the particular format for that. Um, so the way that these work, one of the reasons that I like Cordo documents better than Jupyter Notebooks is that Jupyter Notebooks, you can't, they're not a plain text file that you can edit. You have to oh, you have to start up a Jupyter kernel and then edit those files in um, in the browser essentially. And so, Cordo documents are a little bit easier. You can just open them up in your text document. And what these do is that they intermix different. It starts with a, a header description that says what format you want the document to be in. It can be in here I do HTML. You can have it set up to be a Word document though or a PDF if you want. Uh, these are the different commands but basically here one of the things is if your code has warnings I don't want that to show up in the final report. Um, echo means having the report show the code. So if we're doing a standardized report that we want to email to a bunch of people, you, they don't want to see your Python code. So the echo true may be useful if you're debugging the code, but it's not going to be useful for, for producing the final output. And I'm going to show you here in a second um, using VS Code that it's not really necessary. And eval just means it actually tries to run the code in the, in the particular outputs. You can do similar things um, as well for what ends up being individual code blocks. And so what these markdown documents do is you can intermix markdown, which this is a header sec. This is like a, a um, I forget the terminology for it, but a, a H1 section in a document is just a hashtag. And so it'll be bigger and bolder in the output document. And then you can mix in plain text. And then when you have inside a triple back tick, and then you can say, okay, here is Python code. Quarter documents, if, if you're a person who uses R, you can use R as well for 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 Quarto. Um, but I here I like using Python, and so and so you have particular code blocks, and then you can intermix code blocks with other textual sections. Um, one of the nice things about Cordo that you can't do in Jupyter Notebooks is that you can have what are called inline code blocks. So this is just like inline in the code Python, and it references this LD variable, which I'll go over in a little bit. Um, but most of the time, we're doing these totally separated blocks, and it produces this ends up producing a table. And this one at the bottom will produce a series of, of multiple graphs. But what I want to show here is how you can use a, a freeware um, tool, um, integrated developing environment called VS Code. So first, there's sort of a special way to launch VS Code when you're working with Python environment. So if you go to your Anaconda prompt, Conda activate your particular environment. Here, my environment that's called ProClone is the one that has sort of all the this my environment variables and everything set up. And so from here, you can navigate to the correct location as well. And then just in the terminal, type in code, and it will launch VS Code. Here in VS Code, we have 
let me X out some of this stuff to get it a little bit simpler. But VS Code has all the different, um, you have a file system over here on the left. So I can open up either the report markdown document, or I created a set of functions to do sort of standardized data input and creating graphs and things like that. So you can open up all of these different files, go back and forth between them. It does have a terminal as well. So you can use the terminal the same as you could before. When I was showing just from the Anaconda prompt, so a lot of people like using just VS Code the same way that I've been showing you how to use the Anaconda prompt so far. We won't need that quite yet, so we'll just close that out. Um, but also here, uh, VS Code, like I said, I have extensions installed for Python and for Cordo documents. And based on those, you can just go and run these particular cells. So you can see it's a backpick cell, and we have this nice little run cell. And so it's all set up. It pulls from my particular environment, runs runs that code. It looks like it ran through already. Now, this particular block doesn't output anything, but we can go to the next block and run that. And you can see that it outputs the table that I created in the first part. And it's a year-to-date table. I'm not going to go over those functions. You can go over and sort of... Uh, as the look over how I built those itself. A lot of it is it's simple in terms of it's aggregating just to months, but it's a little bit more complicated in terms of um, uh, checking to make sure doing the prior year to date calculations. So, but here you can see you can run the cell and get YTD. You can also, it has like a little terminal over here on the side where you can do other intermediate variables. So X equals ABC. And then if you just hit enter, sometimes in, when you're working in different Jupyter Notebook environments, you have to hit control enter to execute a cell. Uh, but here it can just be enter. And then here you also have this nice little open variables view. So we can see we have these different variables in our environment, including X. And we just made our ABC. For the data frame, it has a nice little size. So it knows the size is... Um, our data frame ends up having 76,000 rows and 24,000 columns. And then we end up having our year-to-date table has 10 rows and, and three columns, like you can see over here. So you can basically inspect all these different variables um, and sort of do interactive and in the Markdown notebook all at the same time. Uh, but I a lot of times I like just doing it from the terminal is a little bit easier. And so here, if I run this one, this ends up generating a bunch of graphs in a loop. And you can go check those graphs out as well. But here, the main thing that we want to do is we want to render our particular report. And so The way to do that from the command line is just cordo rendo, cordo render, and then report.qmd. And this runs pretty fast, so it should only take um, less than a minute to output the particular file. And then we have the report.html. Now, this doesn't look nice, but you can actually go into the files and open it up in your web browser. And it will look quite a bit nicer. I have other documentation in the EPUB about formatting tables nicely. Um, so here we would want to like write a line, the number, the number columns, and maybe just like have this in the title itself, but it doesn't look too bad off the hook, offhand. And so you can just save it as a PDF, um, as well here, if that's easier to, to email as well than an HTML document.